welcome back to another episode of Universal Yums. Um, it's just John and I right now. Andrea is out of town. Um, she's visiting Jackie. But hopefully we'll all three be together for next month. Or four, actually. Four. All four be together for next month's box. Um, this is the June box. We are doing it in a timely manner. We actually and, are for once. Yeah. It, it just arrived on Friday. so Or Saturday, actually. And we're recording on Sunday. so uh, It's Mexico. Mexico. Which it could either be good or bad, mostly because we've had a lot of Mexico well, we've snacks. specifically done a we did a Mexico episode like without a box. We just went to the store and got some stuff. So yeah, so that might mm. yeah. we'll see what different. I mean, I already see different stuff. Different stuff. So I mean, Takis. Yeah, but other yeah. than that, okay. All right. What's, what is first on the agenda? So first we have Barcel habanero potato chips. All right, that's true. In 1519, suck. the Spanish invaded Mexico. So they wreaked plenty of havoc, they also made plenty of new discoveries. One of these was the jalapeno pepper. Sorry, habanero pepper. Oh. The Spaniards loved the spicy vegetables so much that they cultivated habanero peppers and traded the seeds throughout the world. By the 1700s, habaneros were so pervasive throughout the world that biologists saw the peppers originated in China. Nope. These peppers are originally from the Amazon and naturally spread to Mexico. Before you experience the power of such a well-traveled pepper, pepper, you'll want to grab a glass of milk. Thanks, kimchi. <laughs> Habaneros are a hundred times spicier than a regular jalapeno. So actually, maybe make that two glasses. Not a fan of spicy? Not to worry. Habanero peppers have a hint of vinegar and a light floral aroma, so you're getting more than just a blast of heat. No good drinks in there. <laughs> you'll survive if you avoid following our you'll survive if you avoid following our lead, which consists of eating the whole bag in one sitting. We recommend that only for the bravest of snackers. I've had two chips, so I'm feeling the burn. Can oh, you, but they're good though. It's, do you it's, need to go get some milk? No, it's not that bad. I'm a big chip. Oh, they're kettle chips. They're, yeah, they're kind of like the crunchier kettle style chips. They're they're really good. Um, they just like the vinegary habanero thing going on, so it's nice. I like them. Pretty good. I don't know if they'd be my to go, like go to chip. I wouldn't seek them out, but they're they're good. This is just like everyday Phoenix shit now. These are these are wonderful. They're amazing, but they're nothing new to us because those are actually the cookies I used to buy like when I wanted a cookie before my surgery. I'll read about them. Maybe we can learn some history. Yeah. I don't know how to pronounce this. Game. I can't. I'm. My brain is in Japanese. Gamesa. Gamesa. Akoris. Akoris. Whatever. Marshmallow cookies. Pretty sure they're called something else in the store. Um, these are one of the most iconic cookies from Mexico, perhaps even the most iconic. They look like something that is left from the pages of a Dr. Seuss book and straight into a, your box. A simple butter cookie mm -hmm. topped with strawberry and vanilla marshmallows would be delicious on its own, but these cookies take it to the next level. The marshmallows are sprinkled with coconut and stuck together with fresh strawberry jelly. The best part, there are eight whole cookies and you can eat the, and you get to eat them all yourself. Gimme. I actually didn't know about the jelly part because you don't really see it. Oh no, I know about the jelly part. Some the other brand, one of the other brands, this dot in the center instead of being more marshmallow is often um, jam. Oh, okay. It's just super good though. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's like what like snowballs aspire to be. Mm-hmm. Because unless oh, you get I mean, like a super fresh, like snowballs are almost too big, and then half the time you get them they're not fresh anymore. Yeah. And if you don't get a fresh snowball, they kind of suck. You know. I always Stereo like liquid. Don't mind me, just reaching. Next is Booboo Boo Boo. Which is this poor. Booboo Boo Boo. We did not have our regular mail person at work yesterday, so the box did not get to sit in front of his fan as he drove it to us, so. We missed you, mail person. He a little melty. It, it was very melty. Here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, stop whatever you're doing, pick up this chocolate bar, and walk to the freezer. Put the poo boo boo in there, sit back, and enjoy the rest of your yams. Too late, I don't care. Well, well, we'll try it without that, and then we can put it in that freezer and try it again at the end. Mm. Move kimchi. Thank you. You can pick up where you left off in about an hour. You're back? Okay. Grab your frozen bar and get ready to enjoy one of Mexico's most famous chocolates. Mm. Only three ingredients make up this iconic bar, chocolate, marshmallows, and strawberries. There's a lot to like about these ingredients independently, but the magic really happens when they're all together. And when they're all in the freezer. That's how most Mexicans eat Boo Boo Loo Boo. Oh, really? And we don't want you to miss out. It's pretty good on its own. I don't think it's in need to freeze it. I can see it being good frozen, like a zero bar or something. Mmm. -hmm. Mm. We stuck it in our little freezer. 
It's really good. In you go, bud. I love anything with marshmallow. Yeah, I am kind of surprised about the two marshmallow things already from Mexico. I didn't assume marshmallow and Mexico went together, but I'm learning so, to learn today. Stop. Before you open this bag, you have an important decision to make. Do you want to eat these chips all by themselves? A good idea. Or do you want to use them to make wild and crazy Mexican street food called Tostalocos? An even better idea. The name Tostalocos comes from a combination of the brand Tostitos and the word loco, crazy. Explain the translation of the word is the best description we could give. The snack is really crazy. Originating in Tijuana, Tosta Locos are a Mexican street food enjoyed throughout the country. Want to make your own? You only need two things, these Tostitos and a desire to clean out your fridge. You can find the recipe on page nine. We're not gonna make the recipe, but let's go see what it says. Cut the bag open lengthwise, so that would have been like down the front. Mm -hmm. um, making a makeshift bowl from the package. That's the only rule. Once your bag is open, just mix in all the ingredients. If you're looking to make more traditional toast to, to, locos at home, you'll need a few things. Peanuts, diced tamica, diced tomatoes, chopped cucumber, chopped mango, hot sauce, chamoy, jicama. Jicama? Jicama? I do that every time, don't I? Yeah, yeah jicama. Uh, lime juice and tajin. Tajin? There's no I there. I keep, it's tajin, I guess. There's pretty... Tahin. It might be tahin because that's a J. Yeah. It's a good though. Um, it's pretty eclectic combination, but don't worry about finding all these ingredients. Here are some other toppings you might have on hand that are good to include: beans, sour cream, guacamole, salsa, corn, shredded cheese, butter, and mayonnaise are used too. So it's sort of like um, like a walking taco when you put like beans and meat and, stu and cheese yeah. inside like a uh, what are those? Tostitos. Toast not tostitos, like Fritos. Fritos, yeah, Fritos. It's kind of, it's kind of the same idea, just a Mexican version. They're good chips, though, by the way. Mm. You, just, you just have like a big old water spit. There you go. Marshmallow? Marshmallow. Sticky marshmallow spit. I understand. I understand. Good chip, though. Yeah, they're good. I think we have a similar flavor in the U.S. It's just like the salsa berry flavor. It's good. I want one more. I don't know, right? They are good. Yeah. All right, this next called is Duvalin. Duvalin, I think. It's been a long time since I've taken Spanish, so. No. Bag of candy? Yep. Let's see what we got. Hmm. Oh my gosh. This is so funny because. We got these. Did we do these in the John Eat That or did we not? I don't remember. Not? But. I saw one of these in the parking lot at GameStop today, half eaten when I stopped to get, <laughs> when I stopped to get your Father's Day present. If look at the back, I don't know if you can see, yeah, you can see the swirl. Um, we know your first question about this snack. How in the world do I eat this? Answer, you're going to have to pull out a spoon. Or use your good old clean fingers. Or... Lick it out with your tongue. Um, there's no... Uh, we know your second question, too. What in the world is this? Answer. There's no better way to describe duvaline, duvaline than to compare it to cake frosting. It has the same consistency and the same sweetness, although not the same flavor. While the vanilla side of the packet will be familiar to your taste, but the other side is a special chocolate and hazelnut blend. Think of it like a Mexican Nutella. As for your third question, should I mix the two flavors together? The answer is a clear no. We've been told by several Mexican locals that under no circumstances should you mix the flavors. Don't cross the streams? Yeah. John's been crossing the streams. No, not quite. Uh, since the slogan of Duvaline is no lo, no lo cambio por nada, I don't change for anything. We think it's probably best to stick with this advice and not to mess with it. Or mix. Don't mind me. I'm thing. just going to drop it. Not, oh, wait, or, and not to mess with or mix a good thing. Sorry, I read that in a weird way. The, uh, the white should icing. This one or should no, I the vanilla it? icing. The white icing is significantly thicker than the other. So like you go to like lick it and you get like all the hazelnut chocolate really easy and the other side is like difficult to lick. Yeah. And at least get anything out of it. It's like a real, almost like a dry cake frosting thing. But yeah, it's it's pretty good though. Like if you had like a gingerbread stick, stick or something similar, or like a pocket stick, um, it'd be real good to dip in it. 
Anything you dip in uh, Nutella would probably dip real good in that. It's good. I just, like, by itself, you need something. I want to use my finger, but I don't want it to be under my fingernails all day. It's like, the white is like a paste. Yeah. Good, though. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just like straight sugar, so... Mm. Hard not to That's like it. royal icing. Yeah. You need a big old hull. No, nah, no. It's good, though. It's 10 candy. out of 10. Do love Mexican candy. That's not... Yeah. Chili based. <laughs> Lucas Swinkles. Rianos, Swinkles? Squ sorry, Squinkles. Squ even better. Lucas Squinkles. Rianos with pineapple and tamarind. Squinkles. I don't know what. Here they are. Here's some Squinkles. Ah, it's the coolest Am name. Am I saying ever. that right? Rianos? Rianos? Yeah. Rianos. Okay. Squinkles. Okay. Give me my Squinkles. There's your Squinkles. Tamarind. It's one of those flavors. It's one of those foods where you find you've tried it before, you know it. For those of you who were with us for our Thailand box, you've tried it. If you're unfamiliar with, if you're unfamiliar, let us show you the way. Tamarind is a fruit that grows on trees like a pea pod. Inside the tamarind pod are a few seeds and a sticky pulp. The pulp makes up the edible portion of the tamarind plant. Eating tamarind isn't for the faint of heart. It has a strong flavor, and depending on the ripeness, the plant can either be sweet and sour, or just very sour. Tamarind is originally from Africa, but it's a popular fruit across India, Asia, and South America. It hasn't quite caught on in the U.S. like it did in Mexico. And depending on your feelings about this candy, you'll either understand why or wonder why not. If you're not the biggest fan of tamarind, not to fear. There's something else to love about this crazy candy, the pineapple. On the outside of these tamarind-filled gummies is a pineapple coating, which sweetens the slightly sour swinkles. Swinkles. Slightly sour swinkles. How is it? To me, they're sort of like... Um, remember that shitty Halloween candy we got that was like... Tasted the, like Play-Doh? Yeah. Pretty similar. It's kind of got like a Play-Doh taste going on. Yeah. It's pretty the good. The sugar goodness on the outside, you can tell they went for something else. But for the most part, um, the yellow tube is just straight Play-Doh. Just not as salty. It might be better saltier. Um, I like it, actually. It's I'm 100% neutral on it. I like this. got spice to it. Yeah, a little bit. It's not bad. It's not good. It's not bad. It's just neutral. I really like it. It's pretty good. Yeah, not for me, but, you know. Yeah. Alright, what do we got next? Got Turn a lot it. of little shit left. I know. Hey, Crowley. Hi, baby. My sonion. I'm gonna have a sippy sippy. <sighs> you look early on that one. Oh my God, there's a ton of stuff in here. Yeah. Alright, what do we got Taki's Explosion. You'll be talking about these chips for a long time. Excuse our pun. That was super cheesy. And so are these Takis. <laughs> Sorry, we just can't help ourselves. Takis are a staple of Mexican snacks. A rolled up tortilla chip that's meant to resemble a taquito. You might have seen them in your local grocery store. Yes. And chances are you haven't seen this flavor. It's the newest in the Takis lineup and the first one to feature cheese as a main ingredient. Mexican cheeses, derived from Spanish cheese making techniques, are known for their crumbly soft texture and their super saltiness. Don't be intimidated by the salt or the fire on the package. These Takis are an explosion of yumminess. They X dash explosion Y umminess in your mouth. They're pretty good. Yeah, they're still got a little spice, but they're somehow sweeter than I thought they'd be. I'm sorry, buddy. Come here. They're good. They're, they're a little spicy. They're spice. a little too spicy for me. A little, a little, they're not as spicy as I like the habanero. I don't know. There's something about that spice that's a little more intense. It's a for different me. spice. This build. The habanero was like kind of all at once. In yeah. Part of your mouth, and this is, is more yeah. like throat. Uh, pica fres fresa. Pica fresa. That's these little guys. Are they fucking plums? <laughs> John's traumatized from the Japan box. Got a cute little girl on there. I don't know if you can see her. When you think about it, they're not. There are really only two ways to eat food. You can eat it with hot sauce, or you can eat it without hot sauce. Most candy in Mexico takes the former approach. In the U.S., we like our candy to be just sweet, but down in Mexico, they want the opposite: candy that's salty and spicy. Before you shake your head in disgust, wait—you're a Universal Yum's adventure. You would never do that. 
You've got to try this delicious strawberry gummy. Gummy? Is it a gummy? Okay. Warning, you might develop an addiction. There's a unique blend of hot Mexican spices on top, which goes extraordinarily well with the sweet strawberry flavor. We promise you'll never look at boring and regular gummies the same way again. You looking at boring gummies the same way? No. I can't tell if it's like real spicy or if I'm just still suffering with the Takis. It's good though, but it does make like your spit like into a gel. You know those candies that you eat and that like your spit gets so like solid and jelly, like yum yum yum. It's pretty good. I like it. We do like it. It's good though. It's good. It's about the heat that builds again. Is that? It's pretty good though. Mhm. Mm I mean, it's better than some of the other. Um, a lot of times you see like the big like. Is it a plum? That's like chili coated and all that, like sugar. Like mango slices. Mango slices, something, and like it's it's pretty similar to that, in that you don't really get a huge bit of the fruit flavor. So there's a little bit of strawberry going on, but not much. It's kind of generic gummy chewy. Sabritas, salt and lime peanuts. If mm. you're a fan of cerveza, end of the legal age, go ahead and grab one. Because in Mexico, this snack typically accompanies a cold beer. We only have stouts, so we're not going to do that. Yeah, I'm not going to. I'm sorry. I'm not going to ruin a stout. These peanuts are seasoned with salt and lime blend, which is a common flavor profile in Mexico. I love salt and lime shit. So yeah. That's, yeah. Mexican dishes aren't complete without a small squirt of lime over tacos, seafood, soup, or even a fresh glass of water. Given how pervasive limes are in Mexican cuisine, you might think asking for one is a fairly straightforward task. Nope. Limes are called limon or lima in Mexico, but in other Spanish-speaking countries like Bolivia and Ecuador, limones are limes and limas are lemons, which is the exact opposite of what we might think the translation would be. Yeah. Hey, let's get back to that beer we were talking about earlier. We need it. Linguistics, language, and limes are just too confusing. Not really. I mean, I can see that being going really well with uh, Corona. Next Corona or something. Crowley, buddy. Buddy, nails, nails the time. Well, that's very limey. Yeah, it's super limey. It's really good. I like it. I like them a lot. Tastes like something I've had before. Salt lime peanuts? I don't think I've ever had that. That's what they are. They're good. Very good. Burp. Probably trying to get into the closet. What do we got next? Oh, is it this guy? It what? is. Oh, cool. Roy, Roy, I know I can say this. Royo? Hey, hey, buddy. Royo de C Coco. Royo de Coco. Mexico, uh, and again, we have two choices of a flavor, so let's see. Mexico is one of the largest growers of coconut in the world. They need to grow a lot of it because they really? eat a lot of it. This isn't a problem as coconuts bloom 13 times a year, but in the Middle Ages, coconuts were so rare in Europe that after they were eaten, their shells were cleaned, polished, and mounted in gold. Imagine how valuable this candy would have been back then. Freshly shredded coconut is mixed with sugar, milk, and a hint of cinnamon and vanilla for a treat that's fit for royalty. Great. It doesn't tell me which two, which my two options are. What did we get? We, just this coconut candy. All right. We'll find out. <laughs> the reason I'm saying that is because it, it, it literally has a little picture that you can't see because of the glare that's one or the other. Maybe it's just brand, because mm. the labels don't look the same, so it might be just brand. Yeah. That's really good. It's just coconut? Yeah. That's right up my alley. I'm not a huge coconut fan, but that's good. I'm a huge coconut fan. Put some chocolate on there. No, that would be good chocolate. It's good how it is. Chocolate would be better. I feel like that'd be really good cold. Mm. Put that fucker in the fridge. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> Cause right now he's he's kind of just like generic mushy, you know. Yeah. Um, which isn't bad, but <laughs> watch out, Crowley. He looks like a like you could mistake him for a cheese stick. Yeah. <laughs> and be like, ah. I don't know what bastard bites their cheese stick like that. But. Well, if you have like a pepper jack cheese stick, cause that's I'm sure I they don't peel him. They, they anyway. Don't stream. Lucas is back. Lucas Muecas Muecas. Cucumber lollipop. Ooh. This is the first time we've ever provided instructions for opening a yum. Oh shit. But if you want to save your clothes and your carpet, it will be helpful. First, peel off the plastic wrap. 
Next, slowly lift the top of the green handle straight up. If you've ever had a baby bottle pop or a fun dip, then you should be familiar with the process for eating this unique candy. However, unlike its sweeter American counterpart, the lollipop is designed to be dipped and re-dipped in its coating of hot Mexican spices. If, or let's be honest, once you've decided you've had enough of the spices, there's a cu cooling cucumber lollipop to enjoy all by itself. There, it's covered in death spice. You covered can't. in death spice. You eat off all the death spice, I'll eat the cucumber lollipop. It's a good thing we didn't hold this box to eat with Jackie. Oh yeah, she would Jackie die. doesn't do spice. That's good. You can get a little bit of the cucumber underneath. Whoops, sorry. But for now, <laughs> it's straight. It's, it's straight fire. Hot fire. It's good. You do get the cucumber. Not like an artificial cucumber either. A real cucumber. Like mm -hmm. I went out to the garden and I'm like, ah, cucumber. It's good. A lot more cucumber, so I'm trying to get down to it. Yeah, it's. I can imagine this is one of the ones where you eat the entire sucker before you get rid of like your powdery base. Because there's a lot of powder in here and it really, really sticks to that thing. Mm. Did you finally get down to some cucumbery goodness? I'm sure that looks very vulgar, but... I'm only trying to lick the one side. Mm. Yeah, it's a good cucumber lollipop. He's gonna break out of his base already. Yeah. Well, we'll put him back. But it's good. That's you really good. You want any more? We because we're just going to toss him after this. Because <laughs> if we set him in here, he's going to be coated again. That's good, though. Mm -hmm. I like that a lot. Yeah, it's not bad. I like the I like, like the cucumber dish. It's really good. Oh, wait, I've always wanted to try these because we always see them in the store, but I didn't know what they are. So. Oh, cool. De La Rosa... Oh, marzipan. Ah! It, it doesn't say marzipan on there. That's why we didn't know. We'll have to save one of these for Andrea. In 1942, husband and wife team... Jesus Gonzalez and Elvira Rolon, Rolon began making candy in their home. They had plenty of people to help them grow their budding business since they had 13 children together. When the children were old enough, they'd work half days in the house making homemade candy for daily wage of 40 pesos. That's about $2.10. Mmm, I like that powder thing we got from the Philippines box. It's pretty similar. That's good. Yeah, it's, it's good though. This strong work ethic proved crucial because today some of the children are executives for the De La Rosa Marzipan Company. What started as a simple idea from their father, grinding up peanuts and combining them with sugar to make candy, was turned into a national obsession eaten by kids and adults of all ages. It's even become a challenge across Mexico to perfect opening a marzipan wrapper without the contents falling apart. I did it and then we ate it and then it fell apart. Mm. Um, it's harder than it looks. What's easy? Falling in love with this crumbly peanut sweet. It's a good thing we included two because you'll definitely want another. I agree with that. Yeah, they're really good. You know what be really good? Chocolate. <laughs> no, it's too crumbly. You'd never be able to dip it without just losing it all. Yeah. It's good though. It's very good. Mm -hmm. Crumble it up on top of ice cream. That'd be fucking mm. amazing. Like some chocolate ice cream. Mm. Be good. All right, what we got next? Las Sevillanas. Sevillanas? Ob Oblius? To explain this treat, we need to give you a little lesson about caramel. Not what it is, but how it's made. Caramel is made by heating up water and sugar very slowly. Its cousin, Dulce de Leche, is made by heating up sweet milk very slowly. And lastly, you have Cajeta. Ca Cajeta? Cajeta? Yeah. Cajeta. Cajeta is made by heating up goat's milk very slowly. They're all related, but they taste very different. Cajeta originally comes from the Mexican state of Guanajuato. Yeah, Guanajuato. 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 I don't know. Located Sorry. in the north central region of Mexico. Now that you're more acquainted with the caramel family, let's get back to this decadent yum. Cajeta is spread in a thin layer across a soft wafer, making a teeny cajeta sandwich called an oblia. You'll notice that the cajeta has a super rich, pungent, and creamy taste. Not to hate on caramel or dulce de leche, but we think cajeta beats them both. Yeah, it's Try a bite better. or two or three and see if you agree with us. The wafer is just there to hold the shit. The wafer is like, it's not even a crunch, it's just a soft, it's gone. 
But the caramelly goodness of that shit is amazing. Mm -hmm. I think we've had cajeta before from a different country, so they call it something else. Maybe. Yeah, it's just like, it's like caramel on steroids, is really the best way to put it. It's not like super sticky to your teeth either, mm -hmm. which is nice. I kind of hate that sometimes with caramels. Um, so it's not super sticky, but it's, it's pretty good. That's the seasoning. Yeah, so last is an, a box extra. It's tahin seasoning. Here, in certain parts of the U.S., we pour ranch dressing on everything. The Mexico equivalent, tahin. It's a special spice blend made from chili pepper, salt, and dehydrated lime juice. The flavors melt together to create a perfect mix of tangy and spicy. In Mexico, it's typically used as a fruit seasoning that gets sprinkled on top of freshly sliced mangoes, apples, pineapples, melons, and bananas. Okay, you get the picture. It's eaten on every fruit under the sun. With summer and full spring, we recommend using tahin to spice up your next platter of sliced watermelon or apples. That's our favorite. Ooh. Not a big fan of fruit. You can use it as a meat as a rub for meat as well. Or sprinkle it on top of pork, pop, popcorn, eggs, salads, and soup. Don't forget it. Literally you can, anything. You can add it to your Tosta Locos. We can try that on some fruit. I mean, they, see, they, uh, the container, you can't, you guys will never be able to see it in the back. Um, well, you we see have, that all over the place yeah. in Phoenix. Um, but we have some fruit downstairs we could try it on. Maybe. Let's, you want to try the frozen? Yeah, let's try our frozen stuff. The should be frozen, probably not going to be. Well, it'll be, like, be colder. Uh, uh. Or we could do the fruit thing first and let it freeze longer. I'm gonna eat another one of these wafers. Where did it go? Oh my god. You better find it or else Rufio will find it later. <gasps> Excuse me, Crowley. I'm sorry, buddy. I know you're trying to lay right there. There it is. It fell like perfectly in the crack <laughs> of the door. And then I dropped it on the floor, so uh, this end right here is gonna be covered in hair. Oh, good. Yeah. Don't mind me, I'm just gonna break that piece off for us. Mm, that didn't go well. Good job, John. Not frozen, but it's cold, and uh, it is better cold. Mmm, mmm, not -hmm. better cold. That's delicious. Good job, Mexico. Good job. And I had ten. Yeah, that was good. That was a good box. So it wasn't entirely sweet like some boxes are. No. Yeah. It was a good mix of. I mean, the downside is like all of their starches or s generic snacks were all potato chip related. It seemed, but it was good. I like. Go get a piece of fruit. No. I'm okay. Full. Well, we're full then. But, I mean, we've had this on mango before, so. Yeah, but. we actually have street vendors in our neighborhood oh. who drive by, and they'll do a little cup of mango for you, all freaking awesome, like super fast, and then they'll sprinkle that shit on there for you. It's cool. Uh, clue to next month's box. I forgot. Mm. Grab your sunglasses because we're heading south in search of good yums to put in your mouth. There'll be spicy noodles, minty milk, and a little bit of rice. Now put on a tune from 2012 and make things twice as nice. Is it Korea? Korea? Because I'm thinking, I, I, th that's really vague. But I feel like gentlemen. I mean, not gentlemen, but... Um, one of the size was one like... One of the size was 2012. The most popular one. What was that called? Gangnam Style. Hang on. Was it 2012? I'm going to go look. Andrea would know, but I'm going to look it up. Andrea, why are you and Jackie's not here right now? It is. It's going to be Korea because it's a uh, Gangnam Style from 2012. Good job. Well, I look forward to that. Yeah, if, we if we're correct, I look forward to that. I hope so. Yeah. And we'll definitely have to save it for Andrea. We can't eat that one without her. Yeah. So um, that is it for this month's Universal Yums, and we'll see you guys in the yeah. next one. Bye. Bye. Hey everybody, this is J2A. We just want to say thanks for watching our video. We appreciate any and all support we get from viewers, new and returning. If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. Thanks again, and we'll catch you guys next time. Bye! Bye.